Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to the Sidereal Vedic Astrology Outlook for the month of November. We are going to take a look at the energy for the month of November, what is coming up. I'm going to provide jump links in the description below. There will also be some quick links in the comments. You will be able to jump straight to the portion of this video that you would like to watch. But for those of you who are sticking around, we are going to take a look at the energy for November. I'm also going to dip into the energy of 2025. I've got some notes on that and how I see that at a very high level in a very general sort of a way, but we'll take a look at 2025. We're going to have a look at your comments from last time. We had really great comments about the politics of what's happening in the United States. And I thought what you guys have to say is so interesting. So I'm going to bring up some of those comments and chat about those because last time I had asked that what are your thoughts? What do you think? So I want to give some time to that. If you missed my overview of the American election, I covered it last time. I'll put a link above. You'll be able to watch. I think it's just the October Outlook. You can click ahead and watch the bits where I cover the American election. I looked at the chart of Donald Trump and Kamala Harris. I also did something a bit unusual, which I never do. I looked at some cards as well. Uh, so I used every tool available to me to just kind of get a feel for the energy. But I'll talk a little bit more about that when we get up to the section where I go through your comments. Now, before I begin any of this, I have something very exciting to share with you. It's now, none of this is my work, but these are books that I love and I want to share these with you because these books are written by friends of mine, people that I care about hugely. And yeah, I just thought I want to share these. Now, these friends of mine don't know I'm doing this. So that's another interesting thing here. I'm going to text them afterwards and say, by the way, I've just promoted your books. I hope that's okay. I'm sure it will be okay. But the first book is this wonderful Vedic Astrology chart journal. This is a North Indian style chart journal. What I love about this is that it has been written by a dear friend of mine, Christina Linard, and I am sure that you are going to hear this name a lot in astrology over the coming years because she is incredible. She is a very accomplished and amazing astrologer. You can tell that by the quality of the writing. She has basically summarized Vedic astrology so beautifully in this book. It's, it's not only a handy summary reference guide that you can just pick up and, and look at if you need to check something. She's actually teaching how all of this stuff works as well. And it's really, really beautifully done. Another thing that you'll find handy, it is a chart journal. So she's got all these wonderful templates in here where now I'll see if I can focus in on that. You can use this to document case studies, um, people that you're studying, your clients, any of that, um, you know, even companies or situations, or you can draw charts for all kinds of different things and you can document your findings here. I love this kind of thing. You can see I haven't started using mine just yet. I'm going to use it because my this is brand new. I just got this and I'm so excited about this. What I'll do is I'll put a link in the description below and you'll be able to click on that and get yourself a copy. So definitely, definitely check this out. Um, another couple of books that I wanted to share with you by another couple of friends of mine. So this is The Art of Living Foods by Anura Desai. This is also such a beautiful book. I was flipping through it. Look at that. And I've got, you see, I've got my own. She's written a little personal thing there for me. It's so wonderful. And this book is absolutely beautiful. One of the things that I love about this is that there's wisdom. There's kind of um, 
beautiful spiritual wisdom laced throughout the book as well. As you read through at the bottom, she's done such an amazing job of this. I was looking at it the other night and yes, this recipe came up, beet soup. And it looks Polish to me, like I was so impressed by that. So it's not just, you know, from one part of the world. She's got recipes, she's got a Thai recipe in here, she's got everything. But it's, it's Art of Living Foods. This is sattvic, beautiful, um, you know, clean energy, high living food. It's, it's wonderful. And this is, this is the way. So if you want inspiration for cooking, definitely pick up one of these. And then my other friend in Sydney, now she doesn't know I'm doing this either. This is her beautiful book, Breadcrumbs from the Universe. And I absolutely love this book. This is actually her silhouette. And we've got the, the light bursting through there where her heart is. And again, I got myself a signed copy. And of course, I'm so lucky. I've got these creative friends who do these amazing things. And this book is just stunning. It is a very elegant, lovely read. It's, it's very spiritual, it's very wise, but it's, it's elegant and light and very easy to take in. There's nothing heavy here or it's wonderful. It's, it's a really lovely read. And this is the kind of thing where you can read a short chapter per night before you sleep. And it's just so lovely. Now, if you are Italian or Italian is your native language, you can pick up a copy of this uh, in Italian. The author is is from Italy and the this book basically really took off there when she goes back to her hometown and certain other towns within Italy she's a little bit of a celebrity there people you know come up and say thank you so much for your book so I just wanted to share all of that with you guys you guys know I never do anything promotional on here but I really wanted to promote those books. We do have Christmas time coming up and a book makes a really beautiful gift. So definitely check those out. We're going to take a look now at the energy for November. What have we got going on? So we've got Mercury going retrograde at the end of the month. So that's why I wore green. I will probably wear green again <laughs> or some other shade of green. I thought I'll honor Mercury this time. Um, I also wanted to wear green as well because we have an election coming up and well actually I would I told you last time I would vote green so there we go that is I've, I've told you if I was in the United States that's where my vote would go so might as well wear my team color but I wear this in honor of Mercury so Mercury is going retrograde at the end of the month what I'm going to do for that is I will cover that in a separate breakout video for all of you so keep your eyes peeled for that we've got time changing across the world so in Australia they changed the clocks just recently I know here in England they're going to change the clocks 27th October so that is coming up just bear that in mind Thankfully, if you're booking a session with me, my Acuity Scheduler takes care of all of that. So that's a good thing. Now, November energies, what do we have going on? At the start of the month, we do have some low light conditions. Okay, the sun is debilitated. Three planets, including the moon, will be passing through Scorpio. And that's until the 4th or 5th of November. And then sort of mid-month onwards, we're going to have, again, that sort of three planets in Scorpio thing, but it's going to be the sun because the moon would have moved on by then. So it's really interesting how we start off the month with what I'm calling low light conditions. As I said, debilitated sun, sun is not strong. And the moon at the start of the month is weak as well. On election day for America, I'm pretty sure moon is in Sagittarius, so that's better than it being debilitated. But yeah, it's, um, it's an interesting time here. We've also got Mars debilitated the whole month. Again, that's also why I'm saying low light conditions or low power or weak energies. Okay. 
Um, sometimes when there are weak energies around, there can, like the shadow side of that is there can be even more aggression. There can be, you know, people acting out on things that they would otherwise never act out on or yeah so the shadow side of this is not good uh, but but I'm, I've got written here I'm getting a tired energy from this Mars debilitated and I've got here people might just be fed up of everything at this time and I've also written here people might be too tired to fight it's a possibility um, another phrase that came in that felt like it had a little bit of a ch channeled quality was this phrase and that is the last of the lowest and I think what we're going to have this month and all the way through and across to next year actually is the last of the lowest energies you know we've been watching the world scene and we've been seeing so many things come down come crashing down you know we've seen Hollywood nobody likes Hollywood anymore it's not cool anymore it's bad news you know it's it's Hollywood is not a thing that anyone aspires to have anything to do with anymore whereas like 20 30 years ago young people did aspire to that you know 30 40 years ago people aspired to be the president of the United States you know, they'll interview little kids and they'll say, what do you want to be when you grow up? And kids would say either an astronaut or I want to be the president. You know, it was like a cool thing. Now you interview little kids and they say, well, I want to be a YouTuber. You know, it's like the whole world has changed. Um, and who would have seen that even 10 years ago or 15 years ago? So it's interesting. We've got this, you know, we've seen all these various things in culture come crashing down. Um, we're at a very low point, you know, culturally, politically, uh, in so many ways. And I think this is the last of the lowest. I think that's what this phrase means, because when that phrase came in, I was like, yeah, I've got to, okay, I've got to dig through this and understand what, what's being said here. And astrologically, we do have some interesting conditions, so I'm going to talk about that in a moment. But let's get back to last of the lowest. So culturally, politically, we're at a very low point. And it's a massive clear out. The secrets are coming out. Um, it also feels like a dam that is breaking, you know. And, and when that water has to push through and when the secrets have to come out, they're just going to come out. They're going to come spilling out and as well we know here in vedic astrology that when that water comes out especially if it's around eighth house scorpio type water it comes out uh, and it hits fire you know you have that gandanta and that is intense energy so we're in quite an interesting time here but the last of the lowest is this massive clear out that i believe we're having we're in now and it's going to move through november december and all of next year so that we are clean and refreshed and ready for some form of i believe very good new beginning 2026 that's when we're going to have a number one year and things are going to be a lot better a lot easier the world might be yeah, cleaner or more renewed or more refreshed somehow. It's like the dark energies are leaving now. I've got here, the month starts on low light conditions and then on the 15th of November, we have the most incredible full moon. The full moon this month is amazing because it's close to Uranus, very close to Uranus. And Uranus is the game changer you know sudden change things just radically change overnight i remember observing that in the 2020 election for the united states i remember observing uh, uranus was very significant in relation to rupert murdoch's chart and what was interesting there i remember this all of his headlines through sky news and all this kind of thing like he was really promoting trump and then the election happened and then he 
changed. He did this 180 and all his headlines started just kind of throwing Trump in the bin. Like it was just such a, a stark change. I remember that in 2020 and that was the Uranus effect. So we could see something like that happen this month and that would be mid-month. In what area and how and what is this change going to be? I'm not 100% sure, but I know we've got this game-changing energy here. So that's mid-month. That is specifically, let me tell you, 15th November, yeah. And the full moon is really, really important because it's 29 degrees, 48 minutes of arc Aries. So it's right on the cusp of Aries and Taurus. And that 29 degrees is what in Vedic astrology we would call a miracle degree, but in Western astrology and other astrologers would call it an anoretic degree. So one of the ways we see it, we see it with that miraculous energy of, of something happening. Um, but how they would see it in Western astrology, I think they would see it more as being something very intense, that things are, it's like the crescendo is at its most intense point. And that's for the energy of Aries. So there could be, could be something to do with standing up for oneself or standing up for something. Let's see, I've covered Mars debilitated. Yeah, that, that debilitated Mars is there. And I remember last time when I talked about the energy of the United States across that time. And I remember with the cards, I haven't reviewed my notes there. I'm just going purely off memory here. And I think one of the cards that came was the Three of Swords. It was something of a, of a heartbreak, heartache, deflation, energy, something along these lines. But let's remember that with that can be huge awakening. Okay, there's this, a lot of, I, feel, I also feel like a lot of awakening is going to come across this entire time. So while it might look bad or ugly on the surface, yes, it looks really bad, but it's because there's a lot of love pushing the gunk up to the surface. So many things are not compatible with where the vibrations are right now. We have evolved. We have evolved so much. We're not the sleepy people that we were in the 1980s. You know, in the 1980s, we were happy watching a Hollywood film and I don't know, whatever else we did in the 80s. Like, we were happy with the, with the lies that we were told, right? We believed it all. Look at us now. You know, we're, we're so much more awake. We're so much more alive. We're so much more present. We're so much more here. The world is getting cleaner. It's getting better. It is getting richer. I know if all you do is watch mainstream news, you'll be depressed. If you study spiritual things and the spiritual path and you look vibrationally and you, you know, all I do all day every day is I'm looking energetically, vibrationally, I'm looking at the stars, I'm matching things up um, and I'm being exposed to a very wide range of thinkers. Uh, I don't, you know, just watch what the mainstream media says. No, not at all. Um, what I'm seeing is that humanity has evolved a lot and we are not tolerating things anymore and things are changing. They're changing. We're seeing it. And it, 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 it looks bad, but that's because there's a lot of love coming up and the gunk comes up, it gets cleared, and then, you know, the love quotient keeps growing. We are on an upward trend and we know this because, because people are living longer. So we're on an upward trend in Kali Yuga. I am sure of this. Yes, we're in Kali Yuga and it's bad, I know. But we're on some kind of upward thing. I really, really do believe that. Let's take a look at 2025 just in brief. Some of the notes that I have here. I've got here, and I'll probably cover this in bigger breakout videos later, but just to give you some visibility now, when we take a look at 2025 numerologically, we see that it's a Mars year. And it is a year that is full of endings. 
Now what about 2024? We're kind of coming to the end of 2024 here and just today I was watching someone on YouTube who gives these small you know 10 minute news bite things. I don't want to share who it is because yeah sometimes people I don't know don't well sometimes people actually do like all the things I share but I don't know I don't know if people would like this guy but anyway he he was saying that this year has been such a heavy year and the way he described it and the way he looked while he was delivering that line it was it was Saturn was written all over the screen we're in a Saturn year it's been a tough year it's been a testing year it's been a heavy year for people and we mustn't forget that Saturn is also sorrow Saturn is also you know great difficulty you work really hard and you get a tiny reward and you think wow is that is that what life's about like you know so yeah I mean we're in that kind of energy this year next year the energy will shift I think it will be except for the start of the year the start of the year just feels tired but then it will get more energetic and it isn't it, there's destructive energy next year and sometimes with destructive energy we're clearing things out we're getting rid of things that we don't need anymore and I've got here 2025 is a Mars year and it is a year full of endings we might see the house of cards finally come crashing down next year and this house of cards thing if you remember I think from my episode I think it was last month I had on my screen that line by Eric Weinstein on the United States election it got 2.1 million views and the line was the entire political charade has come crashing down now this got a lot of publicity 2.1 million views people are looking at this people are listening to this this isn't niche anymore this is being talked about you know here in our community we've been talking about this kind of thing for a long time that the house of cards will come crashing down and secrets are coming out and all this kind of thing you know in our world we talk about this stuff because we've been studying into it we know about all this for a long time and we've seen conspiracy theorists come and go on the internet you know I've seen so many channels be shut down I miss some of those channels um, yeah so the house of cards will finally come crashing down next year I do believe that that's materializing in front of our eyes right now we're gonna see more of it <clears throat> the trend will continue Mars will retrograde across the start of the new year opposite Pluto in Capricorn so this is at the start of the year Mars is weak Mars is a bit powerless and a powerless Mars can still be a destructive Mars interestingly if someone is is weak when it comes to Mars energy then they can't help but act on the the um, perhaps some of the unprocessed stuff that they're, that they're carrying within them uh, I've got here this is a powerless Mars against a powerful Pluto Pluto is literally ripping the weeds out of the establishment now I mean I, I reflected on that this morning I wrote these notes yesterday I mean Pluto is perhaps ripping the heart out of the establishment right now maybe I don't know I don't know how big how big this is but it, it feels kind of big yeah like this is um, these are big energies what's going on now all right so I think what we'll do is we'll take a look at your comments how we're we doing for time we're doing okay we'll have a look at your comments guys I just wanted to bring some of these up because they were so good and it felt like we were having just a big conversation together and let's keep the conversation going I also want to thank everyone for being really kind in the comments last time thank you so much guys thank you for that I did say that yeah let's talk about politics but let's not oh hang on this is not going in order I wanted it to go in order okay yep yeah, that's fine sorry about that having technical difficulties but yeah I just wanted to say I wanted to thank everyone for being kind in the comments everyone was kind to each other kind to me thank you it makes a real difference because yeah otherwise I don't want to talk about politics I really don't want to but then at the same time I don't want to 
be avoidant or not courageous or something like that. I don't want to do that either because um, some of the sp spiritual people I watch on the internet and admire, they don't like other spiritual people who don't talk about these things. And yeah, I agree. I think we should be able to talk about these things and it shouldn't cause a meltdown out there somewhere, you know? It's like these are just words and concepts, exchange of ideas. Um, yeah, and so that's really good. So let's take a look at what some of you guys have to say. Uh, the first comment I screenshotted, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blur out people's names so that you don't feel shy or anything because um, you probably didn't know that I was gonna put put it up on the screen so that's why I just blur out the name but if anyone wants to go back to the video you'll find all these comments are there so this lovely person here says I heard about Jill Stein today and was very surprised I want to feel peace with my vote bless our hearts during this significant journey absolutely bless your hearts indeed uh, it's all going to be fine you know and I, I watched someone recently chat about who they were going to vote for so this young man goes to different parts of america and he just has a microphone and he asks people are you gonna who are you gonna vote for and each person will say who they're gonna vote for and usually in a video he's about 50 50. he's got 50 percent of people saying i'm voting you know trump and 50 percent of people saying i'm voting kamala harris and one of the people responded and they said um, you know, I'm going to put my vote for such and such. And he said, but do you know what? Then I'm going to get up the next day and I'm going to go to work and my life is going to be the same. And that's right. <laughs> that is the truth of it. You know, our, our lives are largely quite similar. These people come and go. Uh, I like this one as well. I remind us all the news is never the now. Yeah. As to its use, truer to the soft S pronunciation news i thought that was news 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 i've been watching this accent coach on youtube and she's teaching all the different accents of england and there are so many and i mean i was looking at this and i was thinking could that be a bit could that be a bit liverpool like from up north am i doing it am i doing it right <laughs> i love the liverpool accent i want to go up there maybe they talk about the news i don't know <laughs> So I like that. I thought that was great. Unless, of course, yes, there's British RP. Hello, darling. I could do that sometimes. That's so much fun, all that stuff. All right, let's take a look at the next one. RFK Jr. Oh, yes. Hello. I love your comments. They're always so good and they're so informative. And I love that you've shared here that I met RFK Jr. briefly when I attended a rally in Jan this year. He is humble, knowledgeable, really does pay attention in the moment has massive experience in the areas that are important to me, war, environment, medical choice, we'll see. Um, yeah, and then you say that you enjoy the news updates here. Thank you for that. Yeah, look, it's, it's good just to chat, you know. Uh, I'm no expert on these things, but I find it interesting. I like to follow, I like to see what's happening in the world. It's interesting to me. Um, this was great. I do not stake my happiness on politics, never have. Me too. Me too. Politics is way out there for me. My inner circle here is, is me and I meditate and I read nice books. <laughs> you know, I, I don't get um, crazy about these things. I know people who their blood pressure goes up in a conversation about politics. Like they go crazy over it. Yeah, it's, it's, um, I, I don't have that at all. So yeah, me too. Um, but it sounds like here, you know, you're gonna figure out how you wanna, how you wanna vote. And yeah, I mean, that's, I just had to change the battery. And I'm also realizing the time is just slipping away. Honestly, I could chat for hours about all these things, but yeah, thank you for this comment. And yeah, you'll have to see how you feel on the day. It is, it is like that. It is gonna be like that. Um, this one I like to look at that, the issue in, America is immigration. It's not immigration, but migration. Yeah, it is. And what I heard recently was that, um, you know, all these people have been brought in and they're stuffing the swing states with these people, apparently, to stitch it up for their side, whosever side that is. Look, I don't know. I, I'm not, 
and too knowledgeable but as I say there is that whole thing uh, oh I liked this very much I would vote for Tulsi Gabbard me too I love that someone mentioned her because I would if I could nobody can because she's not in and which you've written as well she isn't a candidate this year unfortunately yeah I've been subscribed to her for ages and I saw the video where I think she was in Rome and it's night time and she said to her subscriber base she said look everybody go and vote for the Republican side and I was like wow look at that like what a journey she's made you know being um, a, a Democrat and you know now telling her entire base hey go and go and vote for Trump it's, it's pretty incredible um, I wouldn't do that but I like her you know and and, and yeah that's fine like I, I, I think she's got um, leadership skill and talent I think she is very good and yeah I'm just glad that she got mentioned in the comments because um, few people mention her uh, and I think and to me that that's where I'm concerned about the Democratic Party because they talented people were there but they've all been repelled kind of thing I mean Tulsi Gabbard she wanted her whole life to be uh, you know in the in the Democrat Party but she's had to leave I know RFK jr. I mean look at him he he, he tried he knocked on the Democrats door he tried as an independent that hey come on can we work together Democrats and they rejected him so yeah and I also didn't like how the Democratic Party has treated Bernie Sanders um, I think they weren't good to him and I he was such a good man too so yeah it's it's interesting times uh, let's have a look at this we've got I love the option of Jill Stein my only fear is that this particular election seems so important at this Pluto return time in US history yeah and it seems like if the vote is split Trump could win and his views right now are very dangerous on many fronts but when there's less risk it would be great for a third option to become a real option taking attention away from dual politics yeah and do you know it's I really enjoyed this comment as well and what I would say here is one of the ways I see this is that um, the two parties Republican and Democrat to me are like they're mirroring the same energy back to each other actually um, so you know people are saying Trump is dangerous but on Trump's side people are saying Kamala I've heard people say Kamala is evil and things like that and it's like that that energy is just pinging back and forth between these two sides and to me they feel like one side and to me it feels like the option is the Green Party but that's how I how I see it but yeah I mean it's um it's going to be interesting what actually plays out on the on the day um, next one we've got is my opinion on RFK Jr and him going to the Trump camp I think this is a good thing because the split between Dems and reps is just a reflection of the trauma in society yes and actually brings more ambiguity and nuance which is what is needed I think it's a brilliant combination and the values both Trump and Robert stand for the fight against corporate political establishment represented by the perversion of the protection archetype Democrats that is very original I have never heard that before and that's yeah that is interesting because I would have guessed I mean well if, if you looking back at like the 80s or 90s or something like that it was the Republican side which would be considered rich and conservative but and it feels like ever since Trump came on board it's like that's flipped uh, there's been like a, a change where it's now the Democrats that are rich and conservative it's sort of how I see that but yeah I, I, you know that's just one way of looking at that that's interesting uh, I didn't like Trump when he was in administration but now I feel like he has a good choice especially with Robert F Kennedy jr. exactly yeah that is true um, because it does feel like he's got a sort of elder statesman with him or something who can um, yeah sort of be a guide sort of thing which is very interesting 
this one, whoa, whoa, have you seen Harris's chart? It's dark. Why feel good about that? This is interesting because I had talked about this just recently on one of my Patreon lessons and it's, it's coming up here again. And one of the things I often teach is that you can't tell if someone's good or bad by looking at their chart. Some of you will disagree with me on this, but no, I stand by this. I, this is something I'm even now teaching on Patreon. You can't do that because that is to make a judgment like that is a violation of free will. Uh, this is a whole big topic, so I, I won't go into it, but you can't look at someone's chart and write them off like that. Without the chart, oh, I might have my opinions and ideas. One thing I will say about Harris is, um, and I'll put it up on the screen, I have been watching Candace Owens do some investigative journalism and I find it fascinating. I've watched all those episodes where she has talked about um, Harris's ancestry and I've really enjoyed watching all of that. That has been really interesting to watch. So definitely check that out if you would like to. Um, but yeah, when it comes to looking at the chart, I don't, um, because at any moment a person can choose the light. You always got to remember that and you've always got to allow people that freedom. So it's really important. And how about we, oh gosh, I've already burnt seven minutes. This is so long. I wanted to talk about these together. Um, this was really good. So this was, people were talking about Trump and RFK Jr. is anti-war. So that comment is odd. So I, I suppose I must have made some comments saying that these guys are, um, I, I don't even remember what I said, but I probably said, maybe I did say, yeah, something about that they're pro-war. Uh, this, this is, and this is, thank you to New Dawn here. It says, um, Trump and RFK Jr. are both staunch supporters of Israel's current devastating war. One cannot be anti-war and a supporter of Israel at the same time. I, I, I agree with this. Uh, that's where I, you know, but interestingly, I did watch RFK Jr. speak at some Democratic something or other recently, or maybe, I don't know, it was in the Congress or it was somewhere official looking and he was sticking up for himself and he said something about he, he was very upset and angry that someone called him an anti-Semite which he's not at all um, so that must mean he was speaking for some truth somewhere because that's what they usually do they'll call you a racist or they'll call you a this or a that or a, they'll find some label to just you know put on you um, and he is not that and look at that we've got this comment here saying that you know RFK Jr. is a supporter of Israel that's true um, so it's 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 just crazy times at the moment um, this one as well there were no wars under Trump during first administration both Trump and RFK Jr. have been outspoken in wanting to end all current conflicts it's true I, I, I do see what you're saying here because when I look back to those years 2016 to 2020 and I was quite interested I watched a lot of news at that time I myself remember Trump going to Singapore and chatting with the guy from North Korea and he had that basketballer with him Dennis Rodman and I remember that because I had watched his Celebrity Apprentice and I was looking at how oh isn't that amazing you know how he did that Celebrity Apprentice and then that basketballer guy who was on there he ends up using his help to negotiate peace with that guy from now was it North Korea I'm, I'm pretty sure I've got that right I remember observing that presidency and I remember seeing that I, I do think he was a guy who was more interested in bringing people home than sending people out I that's what I remember too but what I will say about Trump that I didn't like during that administration was the way that he handled the pandemic time and he was very proud of himself for warp speeding chemicals you know into the lives of his own people I, 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 I didn't think that was good at all um, and yeah I just what I think there hang on let's see what the next couple of comments are uh, oh yes I like this one very much and then I'll just run past you guys a thing that I felt from the debate and I'll just share with you what I felt there um, I really like this comment too. 
This was Dawn West. It says here, um, I would have totally voted for RFK, but I'm not a Trump supporter and I won't vote for Kamala. Yeah, I, I feel like this too. It says here, it's a difficult decision because I love that RFK wants to clean up our food system in America. Yes, I'm a very big supporter of that. So does this mean I vote for Trump? Well, really, I no longer believe I have a vote. Yeah, and I really don't believe either of them would be running the country. Yes. Corporations run America and corporations take us to war, not presidents. This is a beautiful comment because this is exactly, it expresses exactly what I feel and believe too. And what I felt when I watched that um, debate, I had a bit of a download that came in and this had nothing to do with astrology or tarot. This was body language. And I like to watch some of those body language people on YouTube and see their analysis and see what they have to say. And I didn't hear anyone say what I'm about to tell you now. Okay, so what I saw in the body language. Now, in order for me to tell this story, I need to go back to 2020. And 2020, I remember at that time, I was chatting with some people who do a lot of deep research into all this stuff. And they watch all the underground documentaries, all the alternative stuff, and they know everything, and they got all the dates remembered and all that. And I would chat with them about Trump and they'll ro roll their eyes at me because I'm sometimes a little bit kind about him and they'll attack me for that, okay? And they'll say, they said to me in 2020, just you watch, if he doesn't win, you won't hear the end of it. He'll take them to court, he'll do this, he'll do that, he'll go crazy if he doesn't win. So I said, all right, fine, I'm gonna watch him like a hawk. And I did. I watched him like a hawk. And he went away so quietly. He just graciously accepted defeat and disappeared. Do you remember that? I watched that deliberately because I was told otherwise. And I, in my intuition told me that I don't think he's going to kick off and go crazy. And he didn't. And not only did he not go crazy he disappeared very quietly I remember I used to watch that lawyer Linwood and he was fighting and there were a lot of people who were fighting and doing things and trying and, and this and that I remember watching all of that anyway Trump disappeared quietly without a trace not only that I used to check out Ivanka Trump's Instagram because she was such an ambitious young lady. Do you remember that? Do you remember how ambitious she was? She had a shoe company, she had a White House office, she was hanging out with Trudeau, she was, she was there, that, oh, Ivanka for president, like it was all going on, she was ambitious. It was like this. And then he disappears and then she disappears. And we never hear from her again. And I'm just like, and I looked at her Instagram and for six months she didn't do a post. They just disappeared. So what I thought, was that maybe he's been told, okay, we'll give it to you in, in 2024. Because we've got this theory here, corporations run America and corporations do all this. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, I really don't believe either of them would be running the country. That's what I believe. And so I think the chosen ones are chosen. And I think they're, they're chosen regardless of what people vote for. So I feel like, at 2020, he was told, look, you be quiet and we'll put you in, in 2024, right? 2024 comes along, then he goes to ABC studio, he has to do a debate with Kamala Harris. We watched it. And it was in that debate, it was such a terrible performance by him. And what I felt and got from his body language, and I was watching the body language, I saw him, when she would talk, He'd just go, he'd nod and he would do these weird smiles and he's nodding along and I'm thinking, what is going on here? This is so weird. Here's what I think. This is pure fiction, by the way. Okay, what I'm saying here is total fiction. I'm just making this up from my head. Pure imagination, pure fiction. What I suspect is that whoever promised it to him, which again is a work of fiction from my head, okay, so don't believe any of this, but like... I think that whoever promised it to him on that day of the debate said to him, oh, and by the way, it's not you. You know, yeah, we promised it to you, but we're giving it to her. It's not you. 
because I feel like on that day he was his performance carried the energy of betrayal and when I was studying his chart just I think a couple of weeks ago for something that I was saying on the Patreon uh, lessons I saw that wow yeah he's got two significant planets in Jyotisha Nakshatra and that's full of the energy of betrayal I don't know I feel like something like that happened because and we kind of know that that could be the case because is there a rematch no there isn't why bother having a rematch if it's not going to be you I don't know he could he could win though because just today then I watched this body language guy I think he's called the body language guy and he just did a, a video showing Barack Obama and Biden and there's this very worried conversation going on so yeah it, it might be that he wins it might be that he wins this look I have no idea and I feel like this with all this Uranus energy that's strong in the sky I think it's very changeable and I think anything can happen and it's similar to what happened in 2020 where we saw Rupert Murdoch just change on a dime with Trump he was building him up and then at the last minute he just threw him under the bus kind of thing it was mad I remembered watching that and matching it up with the stars I remember that I remember guys oh my gosh I've talked so much so I'm sorry for talking so much about politics but this is going to be the last time I talk about it I hope uh, yeah it's uncomfortable for me to talk about politics I don't want to do it but um, I, you know, I, I mean all all sides well I wish everybody well I don't want any you know if, I, I, because I, I've got friends who vote both sides in this country I've got friends who vote Labour I've got friends who vote Conservative uh, it, me this time I didn't vote for anybody and I, that has been so good I feel so happy about that 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 was the right choice for me to not participate in this last election yeah I feel good about that all right well anyway guys I, I wish everybody well there in the United States honestly I and you're gonna be fine it's the whole country's gonna be fine it's a great country you know there's no way that things are gonna people have to have more faith in them, their own country and their th themselves and yeah things have changed and Hollywood's not what it was and all that but there are all these new things going on and there's growth in other areas and you know um, we mustn't let the outside world bother us too much you know we've got to be strong right all right guys well let's take a look at the mini reports for this month so we're going to have a look at Aries Aries welcome thank you so much for joining so this is Aries ascendant Aries moon or Aries sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology so we've got Saturn's 10th aspect on the 8th house Scorpio this month we're going to have Venus Sun and Mercury all pass through the 8th house and, and what I want to do is focus on this strong Saturnian aspect uh, that that way we kind of check in with Saturn a little bit last month I really did cover quite a bit the movement of Venus and Sun through this area so um, because I've already given some coverage of this I'm taking this slightly different angle I thought we could look at Saturn's aspect um, because I think we're all going to feel it and how this is going to manifest for you is that relationships can be tested in the early part of the month you might notice that um, and you might be able to accurately feel or intuit hidden agendas behind family members and or co-workers this month it feels like some things are just going to become very obvious to you and it's in a hidden sort of a way it's in a psychic sort of a way where you're just going to understand okay all right I get it I yep it's it's clear to me um, and there'll be something in that where there are answers for you you'll see them you'll know them so this isn't necessarily about interacting with anyone else it's not you're interacting with anyone else but you're just getting deep understandings of the hidden agendas or the hidden dynamics between you and certain people close to you I've got here the veil is thinner we've got Saturn's aspect on your eighth house and that is going to materialize hidden or abstract understandings of things it's a very interesting time uh, on the 1st of November we've got a new moon in seventh house Libra Swati Nakshatra so this is a renewal in love 
with your committed partner or this is a really great time to plant a wish to meet your dream partner and on the 15th of November we've got a full moon in first house Aries Krithika Nakshatra so there's a decisive energy present and this is regarding something to do with standing up for yourself you might need to stand up for yourself in some situation you might change your mind about something equally someone around you might change their mind at the last minute as well Aries it's looking like a pretty good month ahead for you I'm wishing you well take care we are now going to welcome Taurus Taurus welcome thank you so much for joining so this is Taurus ascendant Taurus moon or Taurus sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology we're going to take a look at Saturn's 10th aspect on 7th house Scorpio this month for you now we've got Venus Sun and Mercury all are going to transit through this seventh house for you we've got that Saturnian aspect so let's take a look at what this means basically you might feel a bit tested at this time work and your performance are all going to be tested uh, it could be that yeah people around you could be more critical of your work or what you do when Sun moves into Scorpio 15th November onwards it might be hard to find the motivation to keep going uh, but your only option is to keep going okay so just bear that in mind this is just one of those times where you might feel like how am I going to keep going you are you are going to keep going you're just going to do it um, I've got here relationships with others might also be being tested across this month it's a busy month roll up your sleeves do a little bit of work each day make sure you rest as well rest adequately um, because this is a lot of Saturnian kind of energy and it could be a bit heavy so you will want to rest it does feel like a busy month where you're just going to be working and you're going to find the motivation to keep working even though at times it might feel like it's hard um, you just got to keep going you got to keep hanging in there Taurus now 1st November new moon in 6th house Libra Swati Nakshatra this is a renewal in your commitment to service in the world or to your career or to something you do I'm just sort of thinking some of you do do like um, you're part of charities or service work or social work you know there's a renewal in your commitment to what you do it's actually quite beautiful and, and it, we've got that energy where it's like yeah it's tough and it's hard and sometimes you might ask yourself what am I keep going for but it's like this renewal in your commitment somehow I don't know it, it gets you through and it makes you feel good about what you're doing as well you're, you're going to re there's a renewal in your commitment to what you do which is going to feel good to you that's on the 1st of November um, and or it could be a commitment to your long-term goals that I just got to keep hanging in there I know this is going to come good this is that kind of energy now on the 15th of November we've got a full moon in 12th house Aries Krithika Nakshatra spiritually it's time to be de decisive about something and you might also get some spiritual downloads at this time so around the 15th of November take care you might find it hard to sleep that night uh, if you do then you know it's the kind of thing where yeah make sure on the 15th of November you don't miss your uh, workout routine or something like that it's like you want to be tired on the 15th so that when you go to sleep it's easy to sleep because um, that moon is going to be really really powerful it's close to your sign too so watch out for that but you could get some spiritual downloads at this time could be a good time for chanting as well all right Taurus well thank you so much for joining we are now going to welcome Gemini Gemini welcome thank you so much for joining so this is Gemini ascendant Gemini moon or Gemini sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology so we've got here Saturn's 10th aspect on Scorpio 
for this month and for you that's happening in your sixth house now we're going to have venus sun and mercury all transit through this house so they're all going to you know be zapped by saturn's aspect there we're, we're, we're going to feel the saturnian energy this month so i've got here your career competition ongoing legal cases you know anything where you're having to do battle or something like that um, all of this could be in the spotlight this month you are being tested more this month and the way through is to rise to any challenge be strong and keep chipping away day by day okay uh, I've got here you have the power to make real world strategic changes this month so if you look at your life and there are certain strategic changes you want to make um, let's have an example of this it could be with your work I mean it could be with what you do but strategic we're in the sixth house here we're in the area of planning so sitting down to think about your life and where is it going and what is it that I'm doing and yeah there's a bit of assessment here you could be reassessing what you're doing what what do I keep doing what stays what goes you could be doing some of these things at this time strategic planning uh, you know assessing your life all that kind of thing what stays what goes making those big decisions about those things could be good at this time 1st of November we've got a new moon in the fifth house Libra Swati Nakshatra so this is a renewal in love a renewal with creativity maybe with your art with what you do uh, a renewal you know of joy for oh thank god I get to do this wonderful art that I love doing um, you could also be wishing for new love or an expansion of your family if you want to have a baby or any of that you could be wishing for that at this time uh, there could also be some of the energy of justice in love or finding freedom in your love life you know rediscovering a renewed sense of freedom uh, in your love life or a joy of being single even why not so this is first november new moon and 15th november full moon in 11th house aries kritika nakshatra you might have a strong realization about a friend or about a sibling and i've got here but watch out because you could change your mind about them or they could change their mind about you there could be somebody changing their mind here uh, on the 15th of november all right well gemini thank you so much for tuning in we are now going to welcome cancer cancer welcome thank you so much for joining so we are welcoming cancer ascendant cancer moon or cancer sun as per the sidereal vedic system of astrology so we've got saturn's 10th aspect on fifth house scorpio this month and what's really interesting about the fifth house for you is that venus sun and mercury will all transit through this house across this month so we're really going to tune into saturn's aspect and, and how that's going to feel because you will feel that with those three planets moving through now this is an ideal time to let go of any romances from the past it's a good time to get up to speed on any admin or accounts it's an ideal time to bring structure to your days so that you can have time to be creative or have fun more or play more with your children there is a need for that and i've got here if you can be disciplined with your time this month if you can be disciplined with your time this month there's something about structuring your days that's going to serve you it's, it's basically structuring your days or restructuring your days is going to serve you and maybe somehow you end up with an extra hour in the day uh, i've just realized we're changing the times on the 27th of october here in england so i know that this is an opportunity for me to restructure my days and yeah i'm definitely going to restructure them in such a way that i have a bit of me time <laughs> you know and i get to do more fun stuff um, I've got here the 1st of November new moon in 4th house Libra Swati Nakshatra 
this is a beautiful new moon for you. Um, it's a great time to plant seeds for a new home or a new living space or a renewal to your home or your living space. It's a great time to do clutter clearing, definitely. That's a good activity for you here, Cancer, on the 1st of November. If you can set aside some time to do some clutter clearing, that would be really, really good. Just refresh your place, make it beautiful. Now on the 15th of November, there is a full moon in 10th house, Aries, Krithika Nakshatra. This is a big, powerful energy here. And I've got here, you might have to be decisive at work. And yet at the same time, so you might have to be very decisive, but also things could change on a dime or things could radically change. This is on the 15th of November. Um, and it could be to do with your work. It could be that someone around you at work changes their mind radically or changes their view or something just this 180 degree change could be happening on the 15th of November. But there's something about you being decisive, you holding the energy of being decisive uh, at your work. Cancer, I want to thank you so much for joining. We are now going to welcome Leo. Leo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Leo Ascendant, Leo Moon or Leo Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So now we've got Saturn's 10th aspect on 4th house Scorpio for you this month. Venus, Sun and Mercury are all going to transit through this house. So you're going to feel that Saturnian energy stronger this month. We've got here more of your time and attention is likely to be needed by your family or by your mother at this time. Maybe you're just needed at home more or maybe you're working from home more. I've got here, you might have expansion plans and yet things are moving slowly still. Changing the structure or timetable of your days is going to be important this month. It will help you to get more rest or it'll help you to have more time so that you can do fun things that you really love. I've got here, see if you can work smarter, not harder. And I've also got here, don't be giving all of your time to everyone else. Now on the 1st of November, there's a new moon in third house, Libra Swathi Nakshatra. This is a beautiful new moon where you can plant seeds either for more freedom or for more friends uh, or for justice in your friendship with someone. Maybe there's an issue where justice is needed or you'd like things to be known or this record to be set straight. That could happen at this new moon. Now on the 15th of November, there's a full moon in ninth house Aries, Kritika Nakshatra. I've got here, if you are making a choice at this time, see if you can tune in to your inner authority and not act from the voice of a parent or some other authority or some external authority. So if there's any big choices here on that big full moon, it's like you want to make those choices with your authority, that it be about you or that yeah, your energy is, is part of the decision or choice or that it's, it's connected with you. What, what do you think that's going to be important on the 15th? Leo, I want to thank you so much for joining. We are now going to welcome Virgo. Virgo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Virgo Ascendant. Gosh, I'm just seeing the sun is really on my face right now. <laughs> that's what happens when you film at midday on a sunny day in, in London town. Virgo, you're here. Let's welcome you. Virgo, this is Virgo Ascendant, Virgo Moon or Virgo Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So now what do we have happening this month? Well, we've got Saturn's 10th aspect on third house Scorpio for you this month. Venus, Sun and Mercury will all transit through your third house across this month. So you're really going to feel that Saturnian aspect on these planets. I've got here, it might be hard for you to be motivated this month. You might be putting in a lot of self-effort or a lot of work. 
but yet where are the results? You might be really feeling that this month. Um, there could be delays and it, it could just feel like, gosh, I do all this work, but for what? You know, why, why am I doing all this? I've got here, use this time to rest or socialize with friends if you can. That's going to be good. Okay, make sure you get out, change the scene, have some fun. Um, what did I read recently? It was a line. I think you need this line. No, the book is in the other room. But the line was something about, it was by Caroline Mason. It was something about habit is a hell that we create for ourselves or something like that. It was like, oh, wow. It was all about how we need to break our habits. And I know Yogananda is not into habits. And I thought, wow, this is profound. So see if you can work with that principle. Maybe... Um, Try and just, even though all your days might look the same, see if you can just vary them a little bit. Uh, and they talk about that. They talk about if you work, if you walk the same way to work every day, see if you can just walk around a different block or just do it a bit differently sometimes. Or I used to do that when I used to, wherever I used to work, I'd always just try and get to know the other streets or do something a bit different here and there. So yeah, it is good to break up routine um with you know just yeah it's it's good if you know maybe two three days look the same and then you see they, they're looking the same then shake it up do something a bit different just just bring variety into your days that could be really good for you um got here yeah so use the time to rest or socialize with friends if you can and ch keep chipping away at your goals a bit each day and I've got here that Saturn is going to catch you up later so don't worry if you're doing all this work and you're like well there's no reward it's being clocked up for you Saturn will deliver it he will give you when he can okay uh, I've got here it can be a good month to get new work or new clients but you will need structure and discipline across this month but equally not um, too much structure and discipline that you lose the spontaneity and variety of life. So on the 1st of November we've got a new moon in second house Libra Swati Nakshatra. So this is a time where you can plant seeds for big wealth. Okay, You want those projects of yours to pay off, plant the seeds that that will happen. And on the 15th of November we have a full moon in 8th house Aries Kritika Nakshatra. So there could be a lot of light on an issue to do with your family, your spouse, your extended family. I've also got here on the 15th of November, you are more psychic at this time. So you might want to note your dreams or keep a little journal at that time. I've got here, tune in, you will see all the answers. Uh, there's something about, yes, you, you, can, you can see more possibly at this time. Virgo. I want to thank you so much for tuning in. We are now going to welcome Libra. Libra, welcome. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is Libra Ascendant, Libra Moon or Libra Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Right, so we've got Saturn's 10th aspect on your second house in Scorpio this month. We've got Venus, Sun and Mercury. They're all going to transit through this house. So one of the things I'm seeing here is that it might be harder to save money this month. Expenses could be a bit higher. It could also feel like that, yeah, you're working so hard, but wow, I'm not able to save much, or I'm not, you know, you're kind of assessing, you're kind of looking and you're looking at the results. Um, so just this feeling of, you know, it's, it's, it's hard, because that Saturnian aspect will be more felt this month. I've got here, use this use time this month to focus on getting financially organized. Are your accounts up to date? Is there admin to do? Are there papers that you've been putting off? This is a good month to catch up on all that stuff. I've got here, structure yourself and be up to date so that when the big money does come in, you are on top of everything. Okay, so you do want to be organized and it could be a little bit hard going this month. There is that, as I say, there's that Saturnian energy and it's just delaying things or it's making us feel a bit sluggish or it's, well, it's hard to get stuff done or there could be some of that. But 
if you structure yourself, if you be organized, if you chip away at your goals a little bit each day, you will be amazed at what you get done. Now, 1st of November, there's a new moon in first house Libra Swati Nakshatra. This is a time where you can plant seeds for your whole life uh, to expand in any way that you wish. So how do you want your life to be in whatever way that is? Visualize that on the 1st of November, this beautiful new moon. And there's something about, we've got Libra Swati Nakshatra, so there's something about powering up. You're getting the power to to do to do something to make significant changes down the track maybe you're planting seeds for more power more personal power yes i think that's what that is and on the 15th of november there's a full moon in seventh house aries kritika nakshatra it's a beautiful full moon and it's going to illuminate something in your relationship with your committed partner and I've got here, you might be required to be firm or decisive about something. And this could be to do with standing up for yourself. Some issue might culminate. There might be some big culmination or a cycle might close out here. Um, it could be that, you know, that there, yeah, there could be a cycle that closes out in your relationship, basically. I've got here, don't change your mind and just be you. Yes. All right, Libra. Thank you so much for joining. We are now going to welcome Scorpio. Scorpio, welcome. Thank you so much for changing. I apologize about the light, guys. I sort of look at that. It's so bright. There's <laughs> nothing I can do. This is what happens when you film in the daytime in London. Uh, Scorpio, what's going on? All right, so we've got Saturn's 10th aspect. On your sign, Scorpio, this is huge. Did I welcome you properly? Scorpio, Scorpio Ascendant, Scorpio Moon, or Scorpio Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Welcome, welcome, Scorpio. Now, we've got Saturn's 10th aspect on your sign. Okay, first house, Scorpio. So you're going to have Venus, Sun, and Mercury all transit through this house across this month as well. And for you in particular, you would be, have been feeling this Saturnian aspect on your life for quite a while now. Okay, it's been going on for many months. So you're no stranger to this energy. Uh, I've got here, things might feel extra slow or extra delayed across this month. And I've got here, in some ways, this is actually very good because you are being gifted extra time to either become better at what you do or you're being gifted extra time simply to rest. Okay, so never see the slowness as a bad thing. See it as a, an, a gift of extra time. All right, you're being gifted extra time. Uh, the other thing to remember is that ideas come to a well-rested mind. So value rest, value taking it slowly. Okay, give that priority in your life. You didn't come just to hustle all the time and pay off some bills for somebody. No, that is not the point of life. So much more to life. And we have to remember that. I've got here, take some time out if you can. Yeah, but equally, I mean, I can also see that like this Saturnian aspect, it's making you strong. It's making you the kind of person who can just keep going. It's giving you stamina. It's giving you patience. So there's a lot of good that you are developing as you go. So keep hanging in there, Scorpio. It's all good. Now on the 1st of November, there's a new moon in 12th house, Libra Swati Nakshatra. So this is a new moon where you can plant seeds for spiritual growth. And you might want to make a note of your dreams at this time. Your dream state might be quite active. Uh, you could get psychic downloads at this time, creative ideas, any of that. And on the 15th of November, we have a full moon in sixth house, Aries Kritika Nakshatra. So something is coming to completion at work or in a court case or maybe if you're competing with someone on something, basically there's going to be 
something culminates and comes to a close here. There's also energy here for you to be decisive and stand up for yourself. So you might want to use that energy on the 15th of November. Scorpio, thank you so much for joining. We are now going to welcome Sagittarius. Sagittarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Sagittarius Ascendant, Sagittarius Moon or Sagittarius Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So Saturn's 10th aspect on your 12th house, that's where Scorpio is. So Saturn's going to aspect 12th house Scorpio for you this month. Venus, Sun and Mercury are all going to transit through this house. So you're going to feel that Saturnian aspect more significantly across this month. Now one thing for you is that it really might be harder to sleep this month. Um, and I've got here, but it's a great month to restructure your days so you can devote more time to your spiritual growth. Okay, perhaps you're restructuring your days so that you can meditate more in the morning or you can meditate at night. I've often heard that it's not good to meditate at night, but I'm reading Yogananda and he talks about that's the time when he meditates. And I must admit, sometimes when I'm randomly up at like three in the morning or something, I do, yeah, I, I can meditate at that time. I really love it. I love meditating when it's really still. So I have done that. But at night before I sleep, I have tried now a bit and it's actually quite good. Uh, I might do like 15 minutes before I sleep sometimes. I like it. I've got here, perhaps you are reading a spiritual book before you sleep. That is quite possible. And I've got here that meditation is more than just sitting and oming. Yes, um, <laughs> meditation is more than that. Meditation actually is also another definition for it. And this is something I've been sharing with my clients actually and some of the people I'm coaching at the moment. We talk about this and one of the things I've been saying is that you know, meditation is also declining the world. You know, even like saying no to going to parties is actually a form of meditation, if you think about it. So, yeah, this could be, it's a good time to meditate, you know, be, be at home more, refuse the world, do your thing, be you. Uh, that's, that's all meditation is sometimes. Now, on the 1st of November, we have a new moon in 11th house Libra Swathi Nakshatra. So you can plant seeds for new soul tribe people to come in or you could also plant seeds for justice in your friend's circle. Maybe if there's something that didn't go right with you and a friend, maybe you could plant a seed that that, that all gets sorted out or that they get to see your point of view or, or whatever that is. And on the 15th of November, we have a full moon in 5th house Aries, Krithika Nakshatra. So something is completing in your love life. You might be indecisive about something in love. And I've got here, choose the choice that helps you be more you. Okay, so there's something where, yeah, maybe you have to be decisive, but it's like there's an energy here, Aries, Krithika Nakshatra. This is about... This could be about boundaries. This could be about putting in a boundary and being decisive and putting down that boundary, but in such a way that supports you and that you can be more you. Sagittarius, it's looking like a good month ahead, even though it might be hard to sleep, but it'll be great for your spirituality. You might get some downloads, insights, um, psychic visions, dreams, See how you go. All right, we are now going to welcome Capricorn. Capricorn, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Capricorn Ascendant, Capricorn Moon, or Capricorn Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So we have got Saturn's 10th aspect on 11th house Scorpio this month. And through your 11th house, we're going to have Venus, Sun, and Mercury all transit through this house across November. So Saturn's aspect on that house means you're going to feel Saturn's aspect more concretely. I've got here, if you work efficiently and in a very structured way, you can make a lot of gains this month. Financial gains, 
friendship or network circles might grow, social media platforms might grow. I've got here, don't be afraid to share what you have or what you know. It's a really good time for you to share. Uh, it's a time where you can be seen and recognized, but you will have to be disciplined, efficient. You'll have to be on it. You'll have to do the work. Okay, so there's no way of dodging the work. You're gonna to have to do the work. But if you do it, it could be profitable. Uh, first of November, we have the new moon in 10th house, Libra Swati Nakshatra. So you could plant seeds for career success, for career growth, you know, to change career, something to do with your career. Basically, you could plant seeds that your wish come true. Um, you could also plant seeds for justice in a career related situation. Okay, that would also apply at this time. And on the 15th of November, we've got a full moon in fourth house, Aries, Kritika Nakshatra. So something is completing at home or something is completing in relationship with mother or you might have to set a boundary with someone uh, particularly family related um, and you might have to stand up for yourself at this time and I've also got the note here that watch out for others changing their minds around you you might be quite decisive but somebody at the last minute might change their mind so it's that kind of energy at this time Capricorn thank you so much for tuning in we are now going to welcome Aquarius Aquarius welcome thank you so much for tuning in Aquarius Ascendant, Aquarius Moon or Aquarius Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So now we've got Saturn's 10th aspect on 10th house Scorpio for you this month. Venus, Sun and Mercury will all transit through this area so you're going to feel that Saturnian aspect. Now I've got here you might be working hard and yet feeling like things are going slowly. Well things will still be slow but you actually may get some more recognition at this time. Um, it's worth that you keep going, okay? So don't, even though if motivation is hard at this time or something, but keep going, keep working. I've got here, you might also gain deeper insights into what you want to do long-term and what structural changes you need to make to get there from where you are now, okay? so. This could be a bit of a strategic time. You might be planning steps or career steps or that kind of thing. It's also good for you to be getting on top of admin or work-related admin as well, just so that you feel organized. Um, if there are things that you're avoiding doing, get up to speed on those things. Just find the time, make it happen. Now, on the 1st of November, we have a new moon in 10th house, Libra Swati Nakshatra. So you can plant seeds for a new guru or a new course of study or to be inspired again, to be inspired to learn again. Um, you could also plant seeds for more power over your own destiny as well. And on the 15th of November, we have got a full moon in third house, Aries Kritika Nakshatra. So something is completing within your circle of friends or something is completing with a sibling as well or in your team at work you might have to be decisive about something and you might also have to choose something okay but bear in mind there could also be an energy you have to st stick up for yourself or stand up for yourself as well that's also something to bear in mind on the 15th of November Though it's a lot of work, Aquarius, it does, it does look like a good month ahead. Okay, just keep chipping away. It's all gonna, you're gonna, your time is coming. It's that, yeah, there we go. <laughs> all right, thank you so much for tuning in, Aquarius. We are now gonna welcome Pisces. Pisces, welcome, thank you so much for joining. So this is Pisces Ascendant, Pisces Moon, or Pisces Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So now we've got Saturn's 10th aspect on 9th house Scorpio this month. Okay, Venus, Sun and Mercury are all going to transit through this house. And that's really the, the portion that I'm tuning into this time. 
I've got here, you might be wanting to grow or be recognized for what you do, and yet you are just having to work hard and nothing much is happening. Um, this is a little bit the case for most signs across the board this month, uh, but it's definitely the case for you with the Saturn's aspect uh, on ninth house for you. I've got here, things may slow down a bit this month, but that is actually good. It might give you more time to rest or to skill up in your field. It's really a time to invest in learning. It's a time to invest in you. Okay, it's a good time for you to contemplate things about uh, yourself, your inner world, who you are, who you want to be. This is also strategic kind of energy. And I've just got here, your time is coming. Yeah. First November, we have a new moon in 8th house Libra Swathi Nakshatra. This is a time to plant seeds for more of your occult skills and abilities to open up or to come online. And on the 15th of November, we have a full moon in second house Aries Krithika Nakshatra. So we've got a cycle completing regarding money and finances and how you use your resources to empower you. Got here, be decisive and choose what is most empowering for you if you are faced with a choice at this time. But Pisces, that is what I have for you. I haven't done this for any other sign, but let's just, I'm going to check your chart and just see if there's any Saidi Sati type thing I need to say here. Not really. I mean, it's, it's just for those of you who are Pisces moon, okay. Pisces moon people, you're in the Saidi Sati and but you know, even if your ascendant is, your Saturn is 12th from ascendant, and that's significant. That, that can be, you can be experiencing the similar things to the um, Pisces moon people. So Pisces ascendant people might also be experiencing some of these things. What have I got to say to Sadisati people who are in Pisces? Um, not too much. I mean, Saturn is retrograding. It's a little bit Groundhog Day. It's kind of going to be that way. And I mean, Mars, today is the 17th October. I mean, Mars in a few days is about to be de debilitated. Yeah, 21st October. Mars is debilitated. It's like there's a, there's a, a quiet, still energy going on. A bit Groundhog Day, a bit not much going on, a bit, you know... Uh, and if Saturn is 12 from your moon or 12 from your ascendant, it's just advisable to rest, go within, meditate more, spend time on your own more. You might be feeling more isolated, but that's actually a really beautiful sacred thing. Uh, you will find true happiness when you're on your own. That's the place to find it. If you can find happiness when you're on your own, when you got no money, <laughs> when there's nothing going on <laughs> and you find happiness in those circumstances, then that's some form of mastery. You see, that's the goal. You want to find that happiness that has nothing to do with the outside world. When you know how to keep finding that happiness, then nothing can touch you. You know, so that is the point of the spiritual path. That is the work that we do. And the teachers that will help you, definitely Lester Levinson. The book is Happiness is Free. The other, what, what I'm reading every night is Yogananda's book. I'm reading his Man's Eternal Quest. I finished that one. I'm on to the next one now. I've forgotten what it's called, but it's very, very, very good. And he's teaching the same thing. Oh my gosh, guys, the camera is just about to cut out. It cut out. Doesn't matter. I'll still say goodbye. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here and for tuning in. This is going to be a huge video for me to edit. I'm going to get stuck into it now. But thank you so much for being here. And I look forward to seeing you next time.